like I said, this is just trial and error type thing. I just like looked at the product, looked at reviews that people had on YouTube already and tried to see what the product actually looked like um, because I can't get any details anywhere else. Uh, I'm probably going to be using some stick pins and then, sorry, um, I got these off eBay. It came in a pack of four and it's just like a mom clip here to hook to the buggy and then it has a velcro area that will loop around as well because if you look at the product like I said it has like this velcro thing that goes on the ends and I couldn't find of course well I probably could but I didn't want to use that so I just found these online off of eBay for four pack for a dollar sixty two um, they came from China so I'll be using these and then this is his old swing um, insert he broke the swing, so I figured I would use the securing stuff that um, is normally in here that clips together to hold them in to use on the hammock since this is basically trash anyway. Um, but you can get the securing pieces at Hobby Lobby. Um, I think you can get a pack of like four or five of them for $2.99. So you can always do the option. I did purchase those, but I lost them and I didn't want to repurchase. So they're somewhere in the house, but... Since I had this, I was going to use this as well. And then we'll also be using this to kind of get um, the measurements for the hammock. And then you will need the, I'm not sure what this is called. If anybody know what this piece is called, please let me know. I tried to Google this thing left and right. I tried to call my brothers and be like, hey, do y'all use this with mechanic or building stuff? What is this piece called? Nobody knows, but I did know that they came on um, pack and plays, like the canopy pieces and the bassinet part that hooks onto the pack and play. They have this thing all around them. So I went to the thrift store and they had a pack and play bassinet by itself. They charged me a dollar for the whole thing. So I just used the seam ripper to rip this out to get two of these pieces. So yeah, you'll need that. So you can either go to a thrift store or use your old pack and play if you don't need it anymore. I just went and bought an extra one from the thrift store because it's a dollar. And you'll need two of these pieces. So yeah, you'll need that seam ripper to rip this out. And you also need the seam ripper to rip out the um, lock-in pieces from your swing insert or if you use that. Um, of course, you'll need some scissors. Handy dandy scissors. And... I think that's all I can think of right now that we'll need. So we're going to get started. Like I said, you'll use this as your guide a little bit. And I kind of already marked mine a little bit. Let's see if I can adjust the camera a little more so you can see the me doing this instead of seeing me. Okay, so what we're going to do is basically measure how long we want the extra product so where's the oh here's we need some kind of marking too i'm just using a highlighter so mark here mark here and then you'll need to know how long wide it is For the width I'm cutting, I'm using this to, as a guide, and what I'm going to do is basically cut like an inch or two outside of it on each side, then come down to where I measured with the other thing. But when I come down, I'm kind of going to go wider, so like an hourglass shape almost. That way the bottom part can sink down and the head part can still be up. Okay, so... I wind up having to switch fabrics because like I said, this is trial and error. Um, and the first time I cut, it didn't, with the purple fabric that I was trying to use, it didn't look that great. Um, I may still try to put it together and see how it goes, but I redid um, the piece. 
and like I said, I tweaked it from a swing. You can do the exact swing if you want, but it was a little big for me. Uh, it looked too big for me. Um, so I did an incline, a slight incline. I'm not sure how to measure incline, but I will like go and show you what measurements I used. So this is another fabric, and um, you will be using like two pieces. You don't have to because this the one I have is thick. Um, but I'll tell you the measurements. This is in inches. So at the top is 13, and then it goes to 14, Nineteen, twenty. 20, so it's 20, um, all the way down, pretty much, and then it's 21 this way, and then this moon area is like 22 and then I just did a makeshift circle it will probably be tweaked and then this piece is the bottom half and I'm pretty sure it will be tweaked a little bit too um so what I'm gonna do is going to once I attach it I'll tell you the exact measurements of this piece but I'm going to attach these two together and then like sew it together and then I'll tell you exactly the measurements because I know I made this moon piece too long I just was eyeballing a little bit better to make it too big than too small so I'm going to attach the the two pieces here and then I'll show you what I have okay so I sew, have sewn it together and as I like I said, this part was probably too big anyway, but you can kind of see how it inclines. Like this has a dip in it now, but the top is still kind of flat, so the head will sit up. So let me give you the measurements for this part, because I'm gonna cut it here, like straight across. So it is. Is this inches? No, it's not the inches. That's okay. Like 15 wide going this way but a good way to measure the width of the top and the bottom is to use this piece is which is what I did pretty much and you just do a little wider and then from the inside booty part to the end is like 10 inches so that's like 10 inches and then this one is hard to measure. Like I said, once you just cut your moon shape, just match up the two moons. But mine is 23. 23 half. So now that it's together like this. So it's basically like making a chair. I am going to um, cut this bottom piece off. And then I'm going to add this piece to the top in the bottom. And then I'll come back and show you what I got okay so what I'm doing now is the top part I already did but I didn't make a I only did like one piece of fabric so I'm gonna add another piece of this fabric to the back to cover um, but I did already sew it and the good thing about this because if I would got this piece just found it online by itself it wouldn't have had the holes in it already so I'm glad that I did get the pack and play because um, it already had the holes pre-made, so and the or needle fits right through it when I hand sew it. So that's what it looks like, and I kind of folded the fabric down to give it a nice finish on the end. So basically, what I did on the bottom part was the same thing, but this one is already two pieces. So I folded both pieces in, 
and then kind of sandwich them together. I stuck some pins in them. And now I'm going to do the same thing to the bottom. I'm going to hand sew the bottom. I'm placing it in the middle of my fabric. I'm going to stitch the bottom. And that will give it a nice finish on this end as well. So it will wind up looking like that. So I'm going to hand sew this side. And then I'll come back and do the next step. Okay, so I attached both ends. This one looks like this. Like I said, I lipped both pieces over and hand sewed it in. So it has extra on both sides and it's the same way at the top. I'm going to add these. And if you get these, then you'll add them the same way. But like I said, y'all can tweak this to, you know, work with what you have. Um, I'm going to add them like this on each end. Add it in the middle so that way you can Velcro on the buggy and hook on the buggy as well to give it extra um, security and stability. Um, I'm going to keep thinking on what you can use if you don't want to use a pack and play. Like if you can't find one at a thrift store or something. Um, um, and I'll also show you once I actually put it on a buggy that you can just use this piece just in case you can't find this. Because this is what I was going to do in the beginning if I couldn't find this. I was just going to use these and hook it on there because this gives it, you know, real stability too. So, I'll show y'all what that looks like. <laughs> Silly goose! Okay, so now I cut another back piece because I told y'all I only put one piece on this side. So, I just cut the same shape. Um, I'm going to add it to the back. I'm going to fold it over. This is what I was talking about when I said I lift the other side to make it a, like a professional finish. So, just turn it over. Match it to this side. And I'm going to sew it. So, and then after that, I'm going to add the, um, if I can find them, the clips back to the, um, like I did on the other side. And I'll show y'all that. And then I will, we're going to run to the store and um, show you how it looks in action. Okay, so I have all my mom clips on, on it. I have the big clip on it. This is what they look like on the bottom. So this is what we're looking like so far. So now I'm going to add my pieces that I took off the swing for the securing. Um, of course, you do the steps that whichever pieces you use. Mine has like the shoulder scraps too, so I have to attach like all of that. So I'm gonna attach those and then I will come back and show you the finished finish product because I think that's like the last thing to add. And then, like I said, we'll run to the store. Okay, so I sewed on my securing things. All the way down. Mine had a lot of pieces, as you can see. So, yeah, we're going to head to the store and see what it's looking like. I'm going to roll it up. finished product. This is what it looks like. It's not like the exact same and looks as nicely finished as a real one, but yeah, it'll work. <laughs> Look at her. Baby just chilling. Baby chill mode. You know what I'm saying? Tell him what's happening, man. What's happening? Yeah. Get a full view of it. You see the buggy. Even though this is what not was not my idea, you know, I would have just set the child in the buggy, but you know. Get the clips. I didn't belt her with though. But you could. Baby safety. Baby safety!